All right, we got to do a funny intro. Okay. Hype, 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 hype. All right, you ready? We're gonna, we're gonna, we got we to we blend our powers together. Let's go. Collab time. Yeah. Gentlemen, across our beloved Kyber Empire to the best video you're watching this very second. We're going over the top 30 best beginner tips and tricks, plus a few extra to get you to infinite fast and dominate your opponent. We have Mobile Gamer! Let's go! Are you hyped? I'm hyped. You're beyond hyped. Let's go. Well, guess what? For each person who likes this video today, we're giving out exclusive variants just for you. Make sure you snap that like button, ladies and gentlemen, because we're about to blow your mind. Let's get into it. We're going to just quickly rapid fire tons of stuff your way. It's going to be information overload, but these tips are going to expedite your knowledge several weeks in advance. So part one of this video is going to be strict overview stuff, and I'm going to let Mobile Gamer take the first five here. Go for it! Right, so you assemble a deck, and then you have different types of decks, and try to focus all the energy on one theme, win as many zones as possible, and person with the most zones wins. This is the easy stuff right here. The main thing about Marvel Snap is there's going to be three locations, and they're always going to be different, and within the first three rounds, you're going to get each location revealed in round one, round two for the middle, and then round three for the very right most one and that's the magic of marvel snap you don't know what you're gonna get and it makes each game a little bit interesting in terms of rounds the length of the game usually lasts six rounds sometimes more if a limbo hits sometimes less every round you're getting one energy but you can't hoard that energy for next round so if you let's say you don't use one energy the first round and you go to two it, you're not going to get that one energy and then have three for the second round so you lose it or you use it my friend you only can have a maximum of seven cards in a hand at once now of course deck synergy is extremely important but what's also important is noting how expensive a card is to play it onto the field on the left hand side you see how much energy is required to play this card and on the right it shows how much power a card will contribute to a particular zone and then of course the third element of the card are the effects there are different types of decks ranging from ongoing reveal decks discard decks destroy decks you're gonna want to make your decks fit around a certain theme now, in regards to tiebreakers, when there is a tie, it goes to the person normally who has the most zones, but if it's equal, let's say your opponent has one, you have one, and, and you're tied in the middle, it goes to the person with the most combined total energy. Turn order matters. Mobile gamer, tell them why turn order matters. A lot of people talk about turn order or initiative. There's going to be a gold outline around your name. This is very important because you play first when this happens, and it's well, who's winning the most rooms is, is going to have the initiative. What about revealing? first revealing first is huge because sometimes it's gonna matter who goes first because if you bring out a card that cancels out the opponent you kind of want to go first what, what happens if you're both tied who goes then oh the total power is the one that determines so the total uh the total number of power determines the winner then what happens if everyone is tied oh then it's random turn order matters in terms of who goes first but the order of operation in which you play the cards even just from your side not even taking the opponent's side of perspective makes a huge deal so make sure when you're placing cards you do the chain order of events in the way you want it to so if you want something to happen a bit later place the card later if you want something to happen sooner you place the card sooner in your order of operation this is really important when you're doing a multi-card hand and this usually comes into play when you're in the, the later phases of three four five and six the main thing we're chasing after in a round are the cubes the cubes determine your ranking inside of a particular season and you're gonna win or lose cubes depending on the snapping situation at most you can win eight at the minimum, you can lose or win one. So if you retreat before the end of the game and no one snapped, there's only one cube at stake. Retreat after an opponent has snapped, but before the game ends, it's a two cubes. Retreat after you and your opponent snap four cubes. Win or loss after both individuals snapped and the game ends eight cubes. So basically, you could win anywhere from one to eight cubes. If I snap, it doubles the stake. If the other person snaps back, it's like a re-raise, and then the final round doubles the stakes again, so it could be a total of eight. You should be snapping when you have more than a 50% chance to win. I mean, I think the game is more about snapping than the actual depth yeah. composition or anything like that. I mean, that if you want to, I mean, if you win the eights and you could lose six ones in a row, retreating, people probably are not retreating enough. It's kind of like gambling. You need to know when to cut your losses and back out. And there's a few things, I, I don't know if you would agree with this, but when it comes to snapping, I think especially when you're a brand new player, you're going to be matched up with bots or people that don't really know what they're doing. 
I would say like for your first 20 matches, always be snapping. ABS, would you agree with that? Yeah, there's yeah. probably bots all the way up to level 30 for sure. Yeah, so just snap. You're going to get more cubes. A lot cubes. of bots, yeah. Yeah, and you're yeah. just going to rise up the ranks really quickly. So, But then it comes to a deeper level of understanding. If you ever watch games like poker, sometimes you got to bluff, right? I don't know if you've ever done this where you're like, oh, crap, I don't have a good hand. But I'm going to make this oh, opponent who know. hasn't snapped yet. I'm going to make them think. I, I, got the... I, I think I think bluffing usually backfires <laughs> in this game. But yeah, I get, you. I get what you're saying, yeah. Sometimes I do it where... You know, because if they're not, it's, it's definitely a psychological test where if someone hasn't snapped and it's already like turn five or six, chances are they're not feeling good, right? Right. And if you can snap, even though you're not that confident with your own plays, sometimes you can trick your opponent and they're like, oh man, this guy's on a roll. I'm going to back out. And you probably got a win you didn't really deserve, but you won just based off of psychological torture. <laughs> this is, I think, really where the fun comes in Marvel Snap is when to snap, when to double down, and when the back out, because you want to maximize your cubes when you have that good deck and you want to rise of the infinite as fast as possible. But really at the end of the day, the game is about collecting cards. We need to talk about upgrading your collection level and how does one do that? Are you upgrading cards and the cards does not change what the cards do. It's purely cosmetic, but by upgrading your cards, you go up by a collection level and that's how you're going to acquire new cards. And as your collection level rises, you're gonna get access to more cards, better cards, and the higher tier pools. It looks overwhelming. When you scroll up, it looks like it never ends. I don't think there's anyone who's maxed out the collection level in the game, right? Oh, no, it never ends. It, it goes never on ends. Forever. So, it, never ends, so there's yeah. no cap right now. So don't worry, everyone. The, no one's gonna be catching up or maxing it out anytime soon here. One thing that gets thrown around out there, yeah. and it's not really clear in game. I again, I don't. You can't find these resources to handle. You have to go out of your way to find it. When people say. Pool one, two, three, series four, series five. What are they talking about? All right, so there's starter cards and there's pool one. Pool one goes from collection level 18 to 214. And then pool two, which it, pool two, which starts at 222, runs through 474. There's another 2,500 cards in there. And then pool three is where you're gonna spend a majority of your time, which goes from 486 to around 3,000. And then there's series four and series five, which are considered rare and ultra rare which right now are available uh, by collection tokens, mm -hmm. and they're extremely hard to get out of collector reserves, like a very small drop rate. And as you upgrade a card over and over and over again, you're gonna reach a different tier of rarity on that card. And each tier of rarity has its own associated collection level increases. When you upgrade to common, it's gonna be a small boost of plus one to your collection. But when you get to infinity, that's when the big boosts happen. And to upgrade to these rarities, you're gonna need credits and you're gonna need boosters. Depending on how many rounds are played, that's how many boosters of a random card in the deck you're playing you're gonna get. So if there were six rounds, you'll get six boosters. If the round only lasted one turn because someone retreated, you're only gonna get one. So the longer the match, the more boosters you're gonna get. Booster cap going to 1,000. Oh, it's 1,000 a day. Upgrading your cards. So let's say you're running into a wall. It feels like you're it's taking way too long to upgrade cards because every time you win a match, you're gonna get random boosters for some of the cards you're playing in your deck, right? Well, what's one way to upgrade fast if you feel like you've hit a wall and, and it's taking too long to upgrade cards? If you mm -hmm. like create multiple decks, you're gonna, uh, it's gonna feel like you're gonna upgrade cards a lot faster because if you're doing a one deck and then another deck you haven't played with for a while, so you're, it's, gonna e it's gonna be easier to upgrade those cards because they're at a lower level, right? Right. I mean, I don't know how to word that, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's one thing important to note too. Whether you win or lose with the deck you're playing, you're gonna get yes. boosters for the cards in that deck. So it's not gonna be for cards that aren't in your deck. So that's the one thing nice. I think that's one thing that makes this game enjoyable. Even if you lose, you're still kind of winning. See, this game isn't really pay to play, it's play to play. And that's how a game should be, right? Yeah, you actually <laughs> have to pay to, up you can't just like swipe a credit card. You actually have to play the game. And so if you're just spending money you're not going to have the boosters if yeah. you don't play the games. We want to quickly talk about the best ways to use your credits as well as your gold. So let's talk about credits first. The thing I want to put out there first is that you want to first, it's very minor, most people know, but some people don't. You want to visit the store every 24 hours, you're going to get free credits. Always make sure you're picking that up at the very minimum because credits are important to upgrade your card, which upgrade your collection level and mm -hmm. the, the ch cycles goes on. Should people be using credits on the fast upgrades? Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. I think that there's an unlimited amount of boosters just by playing the game. And so you're actually wasting credits by doing that rather than just upgrading the cards that you're getting boosters for. If you play the game enough, you're gonna have too many boosters anyways. 
And so the fast upgrade is really not worth it. What should we be using gold on? In the past, the best way to spend gold would be to just buy the credits or refresh the, the daily activities. And that way you can advance your correction power. Now, if you're spending money in the game, that is gonna move your account the fastest. But I think a lot of people now are saving their gold for those big bundles, yeah. like the 7,500 bundle, uh, which had uh, 9,500 credits and 3,000 collector tokens. The collector tokens are very valuable. Well, the other thing you could buy are the variant cards. Can you explain what those variant cards are and, and why you shouldn't be buying them? If you want right. to spend gold on variants, I mean, that's strictly a cosmetic upgrade, yeah. and you, you'll be one of the cool kids if you have a rare variant. Yeah, so you're not going to see cards in there that you don't have. They're just variants of cards you already have, and it's mostly cosmetic. So if you want to spend money, you can't but it's not going to increase your performance. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. We have a special tradition that Mobile Gamer and I have been doing for many years on another game that we played back in the past, and that's a free giveaway, and we have exclusive variants for each person who likes this yeah. video today. Yeah. We have... Yeah, this is going to be a Spider-Man variant. Are you ready for it? Spiders. I really hope... Spider-Man variant, yeah. <laughs> All right, I really hope you liked this video today because if you did, you are in luck. For every single person that likes this video, you'll be getting for free in your account a Bully Maguire, Bully Maguire <laughs> variant. This <laughs> is not a scam. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This game has been a ton of fun, and hopefully we were able to give you a ton of knowledge to get you up and running. Let us know what videos you want to see down below, and be sure to check out Mobile Gamers channel. Leave that like, comment down below, subscribe so you're not missing a thing. And always remember that it's great to be in the Empire.